this is old cam. And this is not a spring chicken. Today we're going to talk about a review of Marvel's The Avengers. Which was distributed by the Disney Company. And we've been actually looking forward to this movie for a really long time. Now part of it is our perspective is probably pretty unique because we, we're reviewing it from a couple of different perspectives. Mm -hmm. For example, Old Cam, you've I, I, been a fan for a long time. You yeah. had a comic book collection. Boy, I had a really <laughs> original copy. I, had, I sold it for a thousand dollars way back. But I'm also, we're, we're, I'm, I've been a fan of the Avengers. I know all about them. But I'm also a critic of 3D. Mm -hmm. And she is basically just a fan of movies. She, she wants to go see the thing. I know. I do it from a purely entertainment standpoint. No, That's actually, it. because she's also interviewed. Um, some of the people involved in this movie before too, so you know she talked to them. I've actually talked to some of them too, but uh, but uh, you know like last night we uh, you know we went to the, a press screening that was pretty full except for the front two rows where we were at. The front two rows are way back, guys. Mm -hmm. It's a Disney. It's an X whatever it is 3D system, which. It is technically the Cinerama Dome. It's yeah. technically the Cinerama Dome is where we're setting, folks. Yeah. yeah in, so. in Hollywood, 3D. This is where they've done quite a few different movies. We're in the back side of the Cinerama. You're going through the front side of the back side. Go through the back side. But uh, basically, um, it, it was something different than we have seen. It was basically, it does not rank at the top of my views of a 3D movie. But as an action 3D movie, it ranks second to... Um, to the Transformers. I would agree on that one. Because we saw when we saw Transformers, we thought this is that was our favorite movie we'd seen in 3D. Because it was a 3D movie with the action designed for 3D. The 3D. Plus the fact is that CG material is always good in 3D because the computer design is that okay. When you shoot 3D with a camera, people basically can't get it through their heads. You can't go like this and you can't go like that. Mm -hmm. You know, you need basically a depth of field to make it work, which is what Hugo did. And uh, what Hugo happened did was that very well. in, in, in Transformers, it was shot specifically so it could be done in 3D, so the action would correspond with everything. Mm -hmm. but this this was not a good This was converted from 2D to 3D. Yeah. They did take it into consideration in some points. In some points. Well, the action, when the action was static, when you're just sitting there talking with one another or rocking on their heels, the 3D is magnificent and the computer generated effects is magnificent. But when they're going like this and fighting and zips and zaps and things are flying around, it really looks horrible. So, but, but um, you know. But Which means this is a movie that will look good in 2D or 3D. It will look good in 2D or 3D. <laughs> I mean, we'd have to, I mean, I, I think, you know, I probably, I mean, okay, we're going to give you an end to it before we finish the end. I'd probably go pay to see it in IMAX. I'd love to see what oh, it in love IMAX. Did they did an IMAX release yep. in this one? Okay. It's an IMAX. I'd love to go see the IMAX version this weekend. But no, it's, it's a really good example of 3D done right with the conversion, except for the fact that the cameraman doesn't understand. You can't use, you know, you can't do uh, overhead boom shots. You can't do this stuff. Because but he, here's the good part about it. Sometimes we've seen where the filming or the makeup, depend, right, depending on the movie, gets in the way of the story. This. Well, this, this, it, it doesn't. It doesn't really get in the way. It's no, just not it just they tend to ignore it because it's. Uh, yeah. It's like okay, it's it was fast like, paced. We're going to talk about it. it's Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey on the screen is throwing everything at you so much, and it's everything that you want. You got, you know, you have the oh, I talk about, you have the smart ass Iron Man played by uh, Robert uh, Downey Jr. Jr. and the patriotic American basically, you know, bringing up the old values. Played by you know, Chris, Evans, Chris Evans, which was Captain America. And so it, it's, a, it's a combination of two, and it basically it does have a story. It has a moral to it, folks. It actually has a real life, honest to good moral, which means if you work together, you can accomplish almost anything. Mm -hmm. If you put your individual prejudices behind you and work together as a team, you can't be beat. Which is what they did. That's right. Now, one of the things about this is I was not expecting it to be funny. Oh, it's funny. <laughs> it was. Because it's was, action and funny. Oh, I mean, there's one, okay, basically, there's one really good scene, which basically, you know they threw this scene in, I can tell you, because the, the, incredible, the incredible Hulk is standing next to the Iron Man, and the Iron Man, I mean, not standing next to Thor, and, he, and Thor is sort of happy about things, they just, they just smashed a bunch of people, and all of a sudden, boom, <laughs> yeah. and, and, and Thor goes flying off into the distance. That was just something, that, that's almost like it's, 
that, okay, then, it's, it's almost like they were playing they, at the end of the they, scene, they right? They threw it in, you know, it was totally unnecessary, but they threw it in <laughs> to make it look funny. But uh, no, it just, it is a really ungodly great setup for a series that they're planning to do, but they're also planning to do spin-offs from the series. Yeah. Here's the biggest challenge with this movie is it's entertaining. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of people that you're familiar with as far as actors and a yep. lot of characters from from different comic books. Whether it's Captain America, Iron Man, The Incredible Hulk. Um, and Mark Ruffalo was actually pretty good as The Incredible Hulk. Yeah, this is the first time I, I haven't I, seen, I've him seen him before. I've seen him, and he's not basically what you would consider an athletic man, but basically, you know, he's, he's graying, he's getting he older, but he looks the part. He really does. He does and, and he made the Hulk look like him in the face when they create, when they move. You know, I thought that was kind of funny because here's part of it. All the other ones, it's like, okay, you're used to seeing them in those characters, and so they fit. Him, he was new, and I'm like, oh, I don't know about him being the Hulk, right? Oh, no, but he did. But he, 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 okay, he brings this sympathy yeah. that that Bill Bixby brought to the mm -hmm. Hulk. He brings a humanity oh, to it right that the other characters, basically, they, they, they've had the wrong casting in the other movies, but his, he makes it very simple. He doesn't want to, you know, like he said, I want your secret, you know, and he said, I'm always mad. You know? I know, I was not expecting that. Now, Jeremy Renner, in here, which is he, he is really the breakout star because it's well, been it's been his year. Because we saw him in um, Mission Impossible: Ghost Protocol with Tom Cruise. Yeah, and we, we were like, no, cause we, we're, we're just like we weren't used to seeing him as an action no, star. No, he's been around since he was a teenage actor, but he's basic. You're we're talking see him a like lot all of these. The only one that didn't have muscles in this movie was was Robert Downey. <laughs> Everybody else is. You know, they're, you know, wall like, wall. including uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson, which is actually a very good um, action female. You know, she was great in that. I really liked seeing her in that role. But just like uh, Sigourney Weaver, <laughs> she's about the same age as Sigourney Weaver was when Sigourney Weaver became the action heroine. I wonder if we're going to start seeing her in more action roles. Uh, well, it was a, it basically, it was a, basically, okay, they overspent on this movie. The figures are between 220 and 260 on the cost. They're kiting it. And the movie can never possibly make us money back. But if you figure, they intend to run spinoffs of uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Reiner, which is the Hawk, you know, uh, and uh, the Incredible Hulk, which is Ruffalo, and um, and and Scarlett Johansson, which is the Black Widow. Uh, they've already got Captain America, the Thor, and the Iron Man before they came in, and they're thinking of three more, three more. Uh, reps, you know, sequels. Well, see, that. part of it is is a lot of times when they do spin-offs, sometimes they do spin-offs, right? And it's yeah. like one after another, so it's just like the second movie. And other times they do it, so there's not that much relation. There's still quite a bit of relation with all of these characters. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that surprised me is any time when you get a, a big cast with a lot of name stars, it's like you almost think, and we had talked about this before the movie, yeah. is you're like, how do they give them equal screen time well, this time they actually wrote they it so each one of the people could chew up the scenery in they group really shots. Did. Basically, they're, it's yeah. how they came together, but, um, you know, it, it, it worked, you know, because it was meant to introduce a franchise. It really is a good, it's, it's a good way to spend your money. I mean, like, you know, yeah, I really like, liked it. And, yeah. and we've already said in conclusion, would we go, would we have paid to see it? Yes. We were going Actually, to. we were. We, we were actually contemplating buying that pass. Was the, forty the forty dollar dollar ones. So we, we watch see, all of them, and then you get to see it right. We <laughs> usually get a free set of glasses if we do that. Yeah, we wanted those. Free, we would. We, we the special probably, edition. We probably glasses. will pop the money to go see it in IMAX because I think it's going to be a total. It's a total <gasps> different experience in IMAX. That's true. And we just happen to have an IMAX theater right behind us, a few blocks That's true. away. Now Gwyneth Paltrow, you saw her in Iron Man. Oh, she has she, a great set of legs. She, yeah, she does. You know, it's perfect role. Um, Loki, Tom um, Middleston yeah. is Loki. Oh, he's really a, he he is in really that. an obnoxious little <laughs> SOB. <laughs> you know, he was in Thor. You know, he's coming back to cause more mischief. But um, it would in, it would in conclusion, this is a. Is good, it already like, conclusion? It's like I feel like we just got started. We just got started, uh, but um, <laughs> no, it's an unbelievable movie to go see if you want to, and you know. Um, Okay, it's not. It's got a lot of uh, movie violence, but there's no there's no cuss words. There's no sex. Mm -hmm. I mean, the most sex you're gonna get is uh, is seeing women in tight uh, shield outfits. That's it, folks. Yeah.
So it, this is a good family movie too. Right, right. Well, I think one of the, oh go ahead. No, right. Oh, I think one of the biggest challenges when you have a movie that's going to be really successful is to do the follow-up because you want to, you're trying to build a franchise and you have all these sub ones and you want to continue it, right? Yeah. But the biggest challenge is the cast because they oh, all have their own. Here's the problem: is that um, Chris Evans is Chris Evans basically is the he he, he really doesn't he's basically a, like a 29 year old nerd in real life. He does. He has he looks short really cut good hair, a beard, and stuff. But he basically so I mean, I've seen him in a in a, in a store. He's walking around, looking at all of this stuff. You know, like oh gee, I'd like to have one of those, but I can't afford it. <laughs> yeah, right. He's busy. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, but he's got you know. He, he, here's the problem: is he has to beef up. He's not normally a big person. He is a slightly built male. That you know, the character, the original character he played in the first Avenger. The thinner guy was Chris Evans. You mean the first Captain America? First, no, it is the first Avenger, Captain America, the first oh, Avenger, that was the title. But the character that you saw that was trim, that became Captain America, that actually was the way Chris Evans looks in real life. Didn't he lose, I mean, that was one of the incredible parts about that what movie. What he did he, was he put He on, transformed, but didn't, didn't he lose weight? No, that he was, was him. Really he put oh. on 40 pounds of weight. To beef up, you know, he only added like 40, I think 40, 45 pounds of weight in order to become a different person. But it, the remarkable part is, if you looked at it scale wise, he just looked like a little, I'm going to say this, a little wimp, he's, and he's, then a big muscular guy. But he is a, he, you know, he's a, he's, a, he's a fairly tall person, around six. He's actually taller than Chris Hemsworth, who is Thor. Oh, is he? Because yeah. in the first one, he didn't look like it. Chris Hemsworth. Um, he, he did great in the role. I mean, all of them, you know, part of it is, is all of them did great. It, it seems like it was like almost the perfect casting for all oh, of yeah. them. I like Cam's work because he has a good He didn't have to hide the fact he's from Australia because he's mm. got that very, he's got that very strict the British accent very from thick. Australia. And it yeah. makes it look like he's from, you know, pronouncing the words exactly properly like they would from Asgard. He was using speaking like, when he does something over here, he has to get rid of that accent when he plays Thor, but um, but uh, like I said, um, I mean we, the like when we see the more we see of Jeremy Bourne, the more Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner. He, he's, he's calling gone. him Bourne because he's going to be oh, replace Matt Damon for Matt Bourne, Damon so Bourne supremacy. Movies. But the more you see of him, the more you see is a really good action actor coming along, yeah. because he's um, he can be mean as hell, but if you look at him, he's sort of the. He's the guy that is really good at what he does, which is Jeremy Bourne, which is, again, what is Jeremy, same name, Jeremy Bourne, I don't remember. But the same, and for Bourne, he, he has that look of being just like you are, because when he wears his suits and stuff, he doesn't look like he's muscular. Um, another one surprised me on this was Agent Phil Coulson, which is Clark Gregg, which who is, most of you would recognize from The Adventures of Old Christine on television. I know. I didn't realize, but part of it is, I'm used to seeing him on TV, and then I saw him on this, and I'm like, you know, He is the pivotal a, character in he this. He really is. He is the reason The Avengers... United. United is because of him. Yeah. So um, he, he played. He, he plays a really good hero worshiper. And Samuel Jackson. Oh, Samuel he's Jackson. Samuel Jackson. He he's just, Samuel Jackson. It's like he is him in, in that leadership commanding role, like you see him in so often. But if you look carefully, Samuel Jackson.